Good amount of cover, but we are going to be starting off not on the command center, but we are going to be going to gardens where we often will see some more DPS play. But it does look like Angry Titan is going to be opting straight out of that at the moment. We are going to be seeing 3 3 on both sides. But let's take a look at the supports that have been chosen. Hip hits here on the Moira, giving a lot of AoE healing to sustain all of Eagle Gaming. Whereas Aphox is going to be on the Ana, giving a huge amount of healing as well, but only on a single target, but with that offensive Bardic Grenade ready to go. That Bardic Grenade is pretty scary. Lobsish being fairly scary himself, takes out the main healer coming through for Eagle Gaming. Hip is going to fall, does charge straight into the pillar. Right now they are a man advantage. Elibos Mecha is going to go down to Super Fluke, but you can see Angry Titans firmly planting themselves on the point. Erky gets a nice little boot there on Nico, shoves him off the edge, and Little Bo is just going to meet his demise as well. Does jump off, get a quick reset for Angry Titans. They're going to take the point. And Angry Titans are making a great use of knockback to try and separate this Death Ball 3-3 comp, which was presented by Eagle Gaming. And we're going to be swapping things up now. Hip fell first on the Moira. We're going to be moving over now onto that Zinyasa, using the Discord to make sure the tanks of Angry Titans can't sustain for long enough. But when you have this sort of composition, you know that Aphox has more healing and a nano boost. You've got to strike quickly and effectively. Two big support ultimates coming through, though. Erky has that rally, and we do have a nano boost available as well. But Lossus is already going to go down, and actually Erky is going to follow him too. Graviton Surge keeping everybody together on the side of Eagle Gaming. But maybe he used that one a little bit preemptively there coming through for Angry Titans. Only God sends it out. No follow-up because the rest of his team were dead. Eagle Gaming are going to clear the rest of Angry Titans up and flip the point over. Yeah, I'm not all about that Graviton Surge right there, George. I think that may have been a missed opportunity there by Only God. No Lolsish to swing in. No Elibo to follow it up with a bomb either. Not even able to bring in those micro missiles for a little bit of AoE damage. Now Eagle Gaming, we're going to be sitting pretty on the point. They've used the rally now from Lyft. So look at all the HP that Hip has. It's going to have 300, including 150 of that, which will have the armor mitigation. I mean, I'm looking at Hardest right now. 500 HP with that armor as well. Leaf's going to swing on in, picks himself up three kills, and Hardest is going to round it out. Evil Gaming find a nice quick team wipe on Angry Titans, but 3v3. It's all about that bubble generation, that bubble generation, the bubble management, I should say, on the Zayas. Hardest doing a good job at thus far. This is why he's so scary. Seems to get grabbed every single fight. Well, Elky's going to be using the rally now, making sure that Only God and Aphox will be building up that armor underneath their shielding. Aphox already down, though. Hit the Alpha Zenyatta. Hit finds the juicy right click. going to send it on in. Hip's actually got an ultimate. A shadow did come down from Lolsish, but it got immediately cancelled as Hardest was able to take him out in the process. Hardest has got 60% on the Graviton Surge. We're up to 50% as well on the clock for Eagle Gaming. But look at the ultimates they have in their bank. They only are missing that self-destruct and that grab, which should be online fairly soon. Eagle Gaming there, though. They did not pursue only God, so he's going to be able to keep whatever energy was built up over the course of that fight. Going to be fighting against the Kavo. He's going to have to rebuild up using those shields. He's almost got himself another Graviton, but Hardest used it first. I think that grab just got eaten from Hardest. Not entirely sure where it went. The hammer definitely did not miss, though, as it did send Angry Titans to the floor. Erky's going to come up pretty big. Leaf is going to get saved there. He did dash in to try and kill Lotus and a Transcendence there used also by Eagle Gaming. They're using a fair bit in this fight. They still have that sound barrier though from Little Bo and they're going to just chase the rest of Angry Titans back to their spawn. They have one more fight to secure this game. And Leaf's going to be falling there to Lotus. A long range fire strike does make its way through the Brigida Shield and that does mean Eagle Gaming going to be under man for this next fight. Little Bo can make them all incredibly healthy. Harvey does that have that sound barrier ready to go. Everyone can get 500 over shield. Question is, are we going to be able to survive the onslaught of the Titans? You see they're playing a little bit more scared now. Little Bo still has that sound barrier. It doesn't want to drop it just yet. Perfect non-usage of the sound barrier. Just making sure they can use it in the next fight. They know Angry Titans are on about 40% here. And they only need to win one fight. So saving it there was key. And look at the ult generation here on the side of Eagle Gaming. They're very close to almost five ultimates now. Super Fluke, Hardest, Hip, and Nico all ready to move up towards those. They can get some potentially guaranteed kills using them all at once. And that's all you need. You need one fight win here, Jaws, to claim the Gardens. Only God's going to have to use his Graviton here to try and win out the fight early. Again, they move in fairly quickly. There's the Graviton Surge, not eaten this time around, but Sambara comes out from Eagle Gaming. A transcendence from Hip isn't going to quite save the rest of their team from the bomb, though. Hardest and Little Bo are going to go down. Nico's mech just gets it's obliterated, and that's only God just carving his initials on the frontline tanks of Eagle Gaming here. See, I'm surprised there that Eagle Gaming did use both of their support ultimates, both the Sound Barrier and the Transcendence. But they decided not to use the Earth Shadow. I feel like potentially they could have saved those two for a more sure fight. And now Angry Titans do look to be in a winnable position. They've got their own Transcendence.
that they can try and use against the Graviton of Hardest. There's no mitigation on the side of Eagle Gaming to try and get through that, except the burst damage of the self destruct We're going to have to line up a bomb perfectly. Super Plug needs to charge out Lolsish, get rid of that shield, and make sure everyone can be evaporated by Nico. But they're not going to be able to do that with the Earth Shatter. What an Earth Shatter. Nico sends that bomb in. It's going to kill Lolsish. Transcendence just in time to save the rest of his team. Hardest and Super Plug are down, and that's Grav. And that Shatter not available to Eagle Gaming now. They're still going to be able to fight on the point for a fair while as they are very tanky still, especially with Leaf in the front line. There is a bomb going straight into securing a Giganti combo, but it wasn't even needed. Angry Titans, they're going to secure Gardens. That's 1-0 up in Lijia. Lolsish there, the absolute hero. We knew exactly what Eagle Gaming were trying to do. He was sure that Hardest had that Shadow ready to go. Rather, he had a Graviton ready to go, so the Shadow was even more ready. Laid it down. And when we talked to Angry Titans before, they told us that the key to victory here is not allowing Eagle to control the tempo of how this game is going to be played. We need to strike when Angry Titans are ready, not when Eagle are ready. You need to mix up the tempo here and there, make sure they're never expecting the assault, and they certainly weren't expecting such an explosive fight there from Lolsish. But we are going to see if there are any comp swap ups as we move here onto the night market. It does look like we are going to be seeing double goats once again. Triple support, triple tank, and both teams opting for the Zenyatta. They know that teams are likely going to play tanks, so they need that Discord Orb to try and chew through them carefully. They just try and keep up the shields for these Ryan Hearts to keep those Discord Orb off themselves, and they can be cleansed, of course, with a projected barrier from Azaya, but Lolsish is going to have that. Well, they do meet in the middle. Eagle Gaming are going to corral themselves on the point for the time being, though. Take Taking up dominant position. And this is a hard job for Lolsish now. His barrier is going to be eaten up rather quickly. Has almost got a shadow though. Lays it down already. Only patches one. It's going to be the Diva, but it might just be enough. Oh wait, no, it's not, because Harless is there with two kills. Lolsish and Elifoto are going to go down. As soon as that shadow got laid out, there's no shield to protect the rest of your team. And you are so open to the harsh laser that is Hardest. Already has himself a grab. Yeah, he does. Only got only on. 74%. You can see the premium in charge here that Hardest is able to get, and you'll be able to lay this one out quickly. Hardest never wants to hang on to a Graviton for long draws because he can farm it up just so quickly against these tanky targets who get so much sustain from all the healers. They're just there in front of this laser beam for so long. Elivo and Lolsish are so low on their own ultimates here because Lolsish already got himself a shatter. Early Graviton surge coming through from Hardest, but a transcendence for Angry Titans to actually match it to make sure no one goes down just yet. Now only God can charge his up. He's got the grab. The shatter does hit the ground coming through from Eagle Gaming, but it's not going to be quite enough to secure anything just yet. And in fact, Erky is going to go down. With Angry Titans chucking out their grab, that's an instant transcendence response from Hip. There's no burst damage to take them out in the form of the Diva Bombs, and Nico is going to actually net himself with one. 45% on the board now for Eagle Gaming. I'll talk about how precise Nico is right now with his Diva Jet Boosters. He managed to knock Lolsish mid-charge when Lolsish was trying to charge into that Graviton and get him on the side so the mech wasn't caught within the charge but was caught in a place where he could knock Lolsish to side out of the range of pinning the remainder of his teammates and save them from the heart. Lotus has another shatter. He's ready to use it. There's the beat. 1,000 HP plus. He gets stunned mid shatter, but it doesn't seem to matter. He didn't actually connect with anybody. A super blue was available there with the shield. Double grabs to meet him all in the center. A bomb on top of Eagle Gaming to make sure they all stay alive. Make sure that they can't get the shield off on the side of Angry Titans. A boop kill onto Hardish, and you can see AT just pushing forward, corralling them into this corner, trying to push them off the edge. Leaf doing a good job of being extremely aggressive in the front line. Has 50% towards that rally, but is the support of Angry Titans that are finding and netting these kills. A Fox and Luddy with a couple and least is in a, a, a place worse than anything else, to be honest, with between a Ryan and a hard place, and that will be Angry Titans reclaiming the point with 96% going over to Eagle Gaming. And you can see just how good both of these teams are at these tank compositions because of these micro plays. I pointed out Nico before, but now I'm going to point out A Fox. He managed to block a huge majority of the Earth Shadow coming out of Super League onto an undefended team by putting his transcending body in the way of it. Still, someone on the side of Angry Titans did go down, but it did block it's only God from being afflicted by that shadow and made sure that he could continue to lay out DPS over the course of that fight, which may have been instrumental to their victory. But Lolsish is ready to be instrumental as well. Another shatter. In fact, he did find two this time, but Transcendence once again instantly used by Hip. He's going to push his team forward, and that's going to be another shatter. Lolsish lays his shield down for not only just a second, and it does manage to connect with four members of Angry Titans. They're going to send the bomb into the point, so they can't quite get to it just yet. <laughs> Hardest whip. and Hip are going to be able to find it, but 99% on overtime now for Eagle Gaming. They're just going to be able to do it quite easily as they just don't get back to the point quick enough. Lolsish, you can see in the background with the charge, but the self-destruct on the point made sure he couldn't move anywhere. The French fans here, including Olbess out there, one of the French contenders casters here, rooting for the team that he's been following for so long. And Eagle Gaming going to be drawing up 
Li Zhong Tower, it all comes down to this, Jaws. We are going the distance, and it's only our first map. It's going to be Control Center. This one that's classically tank-oriented, and given the historical precedent of what we've seen on Li Zhong Tower for the last two stages, I think we may well be seeing tanks again. Would not be a surprise. <laughs> that would be a surprise. We have seen a lot on this map, though, throughout Contenders. We've seen a lot of Fara play. We've seen a little bit of McCree as seen well. Seen a bit of Doomfist. Doomfist also, to stall out points, is also pretty prevalent. My mind cast me straight back to the Giganti game. RCK somehow surviving for about two years on the point with Doomfist. But now Giganti are dead, courtesy of Eagle Gaming. And Eagle Gaming looking to slay again. A Fox out on Vienna and Erky, of course, on Vermeer. Wants to try and split off Super Bluke from the remainder of his team, because Super Bluke's been a big problem. No projected barrier here, but he is going to manage to walk over that up. Mate. Ice wall. <laughs> it's a big green wall. That's a lot of healing as well coming through for Angry Titans. Oh, not quite. Every single person there got inflicted with that bio grenade, just meaning 50% extra healing for every single member. Pretty easy, actually, for Angry Titans to move after that one. Erky, uh, like you mentioned, was trying to wall off the Reinhardts there to find an easy pin for Lulzish. Didn't even need it, apparently. Erky. Uh, you don't need him. Like, Lulzish, he can just hand, his, hand himself. And one of the reasons why the May is so effective here is because Hit as in Yata doesn't have much of a way of movement abilities. He can't make his way around the all very quickly to help Super Blue or anyone else who may be caught on that side. But that was a pretty good engagement there from Eagle Game. They all got through rather quickly. You can see Erky with his mouse tip, tip ever so slightly downwards. He's looking for that wall. He's ready to place it. But as soon as that does go down, angry times of uh, Eagle Game, we have to be extremely careful. They can't push through it. Rather quickly, they haven't got a lot of damage to break the walls That's rather fast. Wall. There you go, another few, uh, fantastic wall. Lulzish does end up running head first in Super Loop. Wall gets destroyed though, but only got off to the side, just making sure everybody's in check so no one can get that flank off. He is 95% towards that Graviton Surge as well, with Lucio trying to find the nice boot kit. In fact, does end up netting the kill onto Lulzish, and only, go, only got going down as well for his like to like. That uh, May isn't going to be long for this world. Does pop her ice block for Erky. Yeah, you're going all the way back to spawn now, mate. Uh, uh, Nico does end up finding the kill, and that will be Eagle Gaming securing the point. Well, he's still here, though. Going to be bouncing around oh. for a little while longer, but Hip's going to take him straight out of the air. Hippity Hobbity, get off his property. And Eagle Gaming are ready to hold fast on this point, Jaw. They have four ultimates, almost five, ready to go, with Nico slowly drifting up towards that self destruct But Angry Titans can like for like. We almost have five ready to go themselves, including the all important Blizzard, but Nico can easily leave that. a very slow projectile with a call out. Right. On the wall. Oh dear. Anybody's in a bit of a bad situation. <laughs> Trapped on the other side of the wall. There was no healing to be had from Angry Titans. They are forced all the way back into their spawn room. Didn't use any ults though. Rather, uh, more importantly, 5% towards uh, that sound barrier. And we almost have a uh, six stack of ults coming online for 80. However, oh, they are going to have to deal with the enhanced armor that Liv's going to be able to get us both hit and hardest here. And Angry Titans are going to start feeling the pain of this particular composition. Oh, there's the uh, Graviton Surge coming out for Angry Titans. Business is going to just keep them all nice and frosty. There you go. Jump straight into the ice block like a good May should. Little Bow is keeping everybody alive at the moment with the AoE healing, but it's all Leaf in the back line as well. Popping that rally, making sure everybody's nice and stacked up on armor. Does mean that Luddy is going to fall. Nice shatter landing on Leaf. They're trying to take him out. He provides so much in this composition. This Brigitte, so, so strong at holding these chokes. I would have preferred to see Elevo not knock away that stunned Leaf Brigitte. It meant that Lulzish wasn't able to keep swinging. He would have had to keep moving into an area where he would have been exposed to the fire of hip if he kept moving. And now Eagle Gaming, they have overtaken a percentage of Angry Titans, but they have also given up ground. Graviton Surge over in the distance there. Hip is going to be able to move forward. Nice boot, though, coming through from Lightning to push everybody away. There's the bomb straight up in the uh, uh, up in the sky. Leaf Shield does get destroyed, but the sound barrier is going to keep everybody alive for the moment. A little bit preemptive, though, I think, there. Didn't really do anything. Everybody was protected by shields. Can't protect that, though. Super Blue is going to send three men to the ground. Only got and Lotish are going to end up falling. Eagle Gaming, firm dominance on the point at 90% as well. And they are. Super Bluke now moving forward. He isn't very close to an ultimate, but Luddy is ready to try and trigger the overtime in the back there. We can see it on our overhead map, but Only God's going to be the one who's going to have to hold this in his hands. He does have a Graviton Surge. Hardest has used it as well. Luddy's still alive in the back, though. Hip is so far away from that transcendence. They can't touch a oh, point. They can't get it. That must have been a whip shot coming through from Leaf to ward Luddy away from the point. Some great control play there by Eagle Gaming. The home team will claim the first map. Two to one. All on Luddy as well in the back. He managed to get onto the point so, so quickly. But like you said, whip shot to send him away. I was so scared there. Hit was so far away, trying to also battle that Lucio on the point. But wasn't quite enough. That Graviton surge coming from, from AT didn't end up wiping the tanks. 
They end up losing Li Zhang, going 0-1 in the series now for Eagle Gaming. And of course, when Luddy's in the back trying to trigger overtime, it does mean that he can't give a speed boost to his teammates to try and move themselves onto that point in a timely fashion. And also, they're going to deal with the Graviton Surge from Hardis, which is making sure that everyone's given a nice group hug treatment and Super Pluke can swing around there. And Super Pluke really has been a superstar in this series for me. He's been doing a huge amount of damage. He's always been hitting great shots as well. It seems like he has Lolsish's number. We said the tank lines for both sides were very far modable, but it was hardest that we did highlight. This guy has a grab every single fight, and I, we did speak to Angry Titans before the games yesterday, and we said, you know, who is the main target for you on Eagle Gaming? Who actually scares you? Who instills fear? And they were like, Hardest, this guy's crazy, man. Like, he generates grabs so quickly. He's always 100% charged. But they also mentioned Leaf, who is a crazy uh, Brigitte player too. Just so, so aggressive. Normal Brigitte's, you know, hanging back with the Reinhardt, just looking for those big shield smashes straight into the shatters. But Leaf has just been so aggro. His, his name is on the kill feed consistently. Yeah, Leaf is able to move forward and swing to quickly build up those rallies as well, meaning that his Zenyatta and his uh, Zarya are always very well armored, and that's important for Hardis because he gets to maintain that energy. Even if his team lose a fight, because he's got that extra armor, he's often able to escape and maintain that energy. doesn't have to waste any barriers to try and build up that energy before a fight. Well, it's going to be the map choice now of Angry Titans. We'll have to see where they actually want to go here. You're not going to be able to scout out a ton from Eagle Gaming. They are very secretive when it comes down to it. It's always hard to kind of pull little bits of information on what they're playing, how they're doing, like in scrims and whatnot. And Angry Titans, I'm sure they've had a, a bit of a predicament uh, for themselves also. But remember, they've had a long time to kind of prepare for this. And I can imagine they've been scrimming a lot of teams as well. We've had a lot of the Overwatch World Cup teams here in EU. So high level of play from them in terms of scrim time. I know they scrim Finland a little bit too. So a lot of practice for them for sure. King's Row will be the hybrid map choice though of Angry Titans. It's also worth noting for those of you who are watching still from the World Cup, but we aren't using the open map pool for the contenders finals. We are going to be using our contenders map pool, which is a little bit more limited. The hybrid choices were King's Row or Eichenwald. And if we move to that second hybrid later in the best of seven, we will be seeing Eichenwald because, of course, it's the only other map available in that particular pool. But for now, let's look to the Angry Titans defense here on King's Row. We're seeing a double sniper composition, which we know very well. And you can hear the French background there. This, <laughs> this stadium loves Eagle Gaming. What a surprise. French crowd, French team. It's kind of, um, it's really interesting to look back at the playoffs. Obviously, Eagle Gaming got their revenge on Angry Titans and made it all the way here. It's kind of a fairy tale, a dream come true, really, to play against this home crowd. And it, once more, we did speak to AT and said, you know, is this going to scare you? I mean, that's quite intimidating coming up against a team that has the crowd backing, you know? There's going to be Angry Titans fans for sure out there too, but that's a lot of noise for Eagle Gaming. And they said, no, you know what? It's going to be good for us. There's no real pressure to perform in front of a crowd in this sense. Okay, using his Sonic Arrow, is going to scout out the composition from Eagle Gaming, but I think they could have taken a guess. It is going to be 3-3. Three, three. three tanks, three supports, and they've opted for Moira as their flex support here, so we're going to have a lot of healing. They can just move on to the point here, because they can sustain themselves so well, they can dare Angry Titans to try and fight up against them. Only God and Erky here are going to try and have to create a crossfire, and it looks like Only God sniffs out what's happening, and Leaf's been very much discovered. Boy, Leaf is actually staying in spawn there as the Brigitte. He gave him a little bit of a surprise, but nope, only God was waiting for it, and now he's completely free to actually rain down fire onto this point, although maybe not be so much as uh, Leaf is going to spawn very soon. Yep, checking his corners. He knows what's good. Eagle Gaming are going to try for this big flank, though, but as soon as that Venom Mine gets destroyed, would it make it? Does get a little pop to on her screen. Does mean she knows exactly where they are. Eagle Gaming there may well have discovered only God's location, and Leaf's going to be very cognizant of that they move forward, but Hip is down, and that's a lot of healing that's going to be missing. Oh, finally, Leaf gets his revenge on only God. He's going to come back from the grave. And now Lush is taking a fair bit in the back line, but he has got that mercy to back him up as Apox also goes extremely low. Nico was able to solo him out there, it seems. Has got Transcendence available, but that won't be used on this point. He needs to get back from spawn first. Double Dragon's actually sent out on the point also to scatter the weak, although not quite getting there just yet. Erky screaming that he needs healing does find Nico's mech, but that will be Eagle Gaming just forcing themselves onto the point, and they find a cap five minutes now through the streets. Eagle Gaming, though, with a huge amount of the sustain that came from having a Moira as well as the coalescence, meant that they could pretty much just bully themselves onto a point. And Angry Titans, they had Lolsh's there ready to try and contest, but his ship was being taken down so far by the continuous pressure from a high energy hardest, the Super Fluke swing, and Nico with his fusion cannons. But it was very scary for Lolsh to move forward. He doesn't have that same single target healing that is available 
available to Eagle Gaming. But now we see him moving away from Amoyer. He wants to move on to the Zinyana and make sure that Bolter is going to be very scarce. That was almost synchronized. Two grabbed on surges, and Little Bo is actually going to face Only God. Well, uh oh, that's not what you want to be right now, especially if you're the Lucio. So Eagle Gaming, maybe you're backing off. Two grabs. Where's Luddy going? Oh, hang on a second. Hips actually getting a little bit of revenge. Finds the nasty right click on Only God. Super Poop. Caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. So Sneeko is suspect gets instantly destroyed. Trying to run forwards to get himself killed so he can reset rather quickly. Now the look at Angry Titans at Alt Bank right now. Did uh, use one ultimate there, the uh, Graviton Surge. They do have that Shatter available, but Eagle Gaming, they can set themselves up perfectly here. Shatter straight into that self destruct from Nito. It's worth noting as well that Elivote is now the player who is commandeering the Zaya with Only God on this Widowmaker rather than the usual Only God Zaya. So the synergy between Lolsish and Elivote will come to bear here as Hip tries to go around the corner with that. Charge shot, he has afflicted Lolsish with the Discord on, that'll be crucial. Twin Dragons again, spinning everybody up, Sam Barrett to keep everybody alive. They are moving through the streets, remember they still have that Shatter. One ultimate use though, another Graviton Surge coming out from Ali Vote, but that transcends once again, saving them. Saving their life for the time being. A hammer swing does hit the floor, another one though, as Lolsish drops his shield for a brief moment, but instantly puts it back up. Superboot will find one kill, in fact two as he finds Lolsish also. Ali Vote does manage to kill himself accidentally with the Plasma Mortars, but Eagle Gaming once again using two Ult rather effectively. It wasn't the shatter into the Big Bang combo. Oh no, it was to scatter everybody and make sure there wasn't any support coming on to Lolsish. And only got Nurky got put in positions where they couldn't really lay any fire into that particular Graviton. So it was a great defensive Graviton. Uh, rather defensive substrate coming out from Nico to scatter the Angry Titans. And Elivo tried to make an engagement there with the Wrecking Ball, but Eagle Gaming have already claimed the point and they've claimed a whole amount of Ult Charge as well. The hardest. Right flicking Lolsish as he's trying to, like, you know, just charge someone. Hey, man, just trying to burn somebody. Nope, not today. Ragdolled out the no way. No pins. No pins for you. It's like, it's like, it's like no capes. No pins. <laughs> no capes. <laughs> not quite in the same vein, but I see where you're trying to go with it. Hardest does have that Graviton Surge and can fling it around this corner. If he does stick it to a building, it's much harder for someone to actually eat it. Doesn't seem to eat it, but instantaneous transcendence here coming through for Aphox. So he's keeping the rest of his team alive, and he's not quite so lucky. Shatter once again hits the floor. Hardest making good use of that one, charging up once again, 500 HP as the rally was used fairly early as well. Angry Titans once more going for a quick reset. Hip has that transcendence, but not much else. Transcendence may well be enough to try and sustain Eagle Gaming here. However, the main weakness of this particular variant of the GOAT's composition is the lesser point healing to try and sustain your tanks. But he can use the Transcendence should it be required. Lolster already gone so low. He's got the Discord Orb on him as well. Whip shot straight into the hole. Super Luke's going to go down. Nico is going to find the remake there. Oh, oh he's oh, joined. More people. <laughs> Poops Lolster in the ground as well. What is going on? These brick eaters are crazy. Leaf's going to find another one. Apex is going to fall. That'll be a sound, uh, a sound barrier coming out from Little Bo. Once once again, only God just trying to charge up on the sidelines there. We do have Aphox switching over to the Ana to try and get a nice fire in a, but she's going to go down as well. No mobility is just a sitting duck for a lot of these mobile tanks. Uh, keep doing a fantastic job in the front line, aiding Lolsish to, uh, to earn himself another shatter. Now with Super Blue going extremely low, has to hold that shield, can't take it down for a moment. They are going to stop them for the time being, but Angry Titans, they're on the they're very cusp right now of just losing this third point. Leaf moved from Brigitte onto the Doomfish, trying to assuage that particular respawn attrition that can occur on King's Row, where the defenders spawn so close. Oh, nice shield bash onto Hardis, making sure he can't get the Graviton Surge off instantly, but that bomb coming up from Nico. The hammer hits the floor, and only God is going to go down. Another bomb does land near the cart there, but everyone was behind it, and behind Super Luke's shield to stay alive. A rally coming through for Angry Titans. They do jump onto the point, but a transcendence to match from Evil Gaming. Leaf's jumping onto his patented doom. Doomfist, he'll be in the action very, very soon as well. Lolsh is falling, does mean Angry Titan's gonna have to be a little bit more worried now. No shields from the Reinhardt means no protection for the support. Erky has found himself a nice chunky ball of people to actually whip shot into, but he does end up getting pinned by Super Fluke. Kills are going in favor of Angry Titans, and they hold firm for now. Two minutes now remain. Two minutes for Angry Titans to try and keep this from being a full completion, but Hip made himself get a transcendent so quickly where he had one, two fights in a row. And I want to talk about some micro tech we saw there from Leaf and Lilbo. If they managed to use two consecutive boots there to make sure that Lolsish, as he used his Earth Shatter, they couldn't stun him out of it. So instead, they sent him all the way to the back so that he was actually outranged from his Shatter, moved back beyond that 10-meter cone. 
Luke's got another shadow. He's moving forwards nicely onto the Brigitte, but they can't quite follow up with anything. They have got Nana Boost coming online very shortly. Angry Times can use that big boot to help on the frontline tanks. The shadow under the cart, the bomb to actually just dissuade them for the time, but it's not going to be quite enough. Another beat from Little Bow. These are so perfectly timed, and any boat is going to fall so, so low as well. Hard is just moving forward, just making sure his life's an absolute misery. Evil Gaming ends up finding the cap. Three points on the board, a full completion as we complete round one. Not quite as fast as they would have liked, but Angry Titans did decide to put up a fight. They found their footing on the third point there, and they managed to make sure that Eagle Gaming couldn't really sweep through. One minute and 14 in their time bank. And now we'll have to see if Angry Titans on their map choice for hybrid is able to do things a little bit faster. We'll have to see if they're going to go for this tanky composition again that we've often seen from them, or if they once again want to opt for the double sniper, which they've displayed on the defense of the King's Row. Only God, for now, he's going to be hovering on that Widowmaker, see if Erky will join him, but I think we can imagine what Eagle Gaming may want to play on the defense, Jules. Is it 3-3? Three, three? I, I think it may well be 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> we'll have to wait and find out. We are getting into game. You can see all extremely tense in the well, front there, There's Leaf on Brigida, so I, uh, I think our bet is safe. Yeah. And I see a Reinhardt on the screen as well. We are we're, Right now, we're doing like third-person spectating. <laughs> Imagine spectating the game from this angle, though. You only see the Brigitte, who's going to be holding Mouse 1 anyway. Just well, Mouse 1 and uh, W, man. So that seems to be the main strategy that Eagle Gaming have. They just run, and their synergy is so good. They're able to stick together, use their ultimates in such a good rotation, and cover each other's back so well. But they rarely do lose these fights where they are able to control the tempo. And Eagle Gaming, when we talked to them, they said that they're... They're more concerned about protecting each other than claiming kills. And I think that's really come to show here. But they they often will peel back. They'll make sure that Super Fluke is healed up. Make sure that he's ready for an engage. Give him time to build up his shield should it be required. And they'll rotate harder still need come into the front to make sure Angry Titans can't move forwards. And then allow Super Fluke to come back forward when that shield is recharged. Which means he's constantly winning these shield wars against Lolsish. Who seems like he's on a permanently low health shield. Because Eagle Gaming are focusing it so hard. They want Super Fluke to be able to move forward with impunity. And always have Lolsish. They're scared of having that shield break against an Earth Shadow. Angry Titans aren't quite that scared though. They did say they needed no fear running into Eagle Gaming. Will be Earth. He's going to switch onto that Brigitte there. We saw only got on the Widowmaker, see if he can make an early kick, but he didn't really find anything. He actually takes a flame strike to the face, so rather careful he's going to have to be as he does drop down behind the shield of Super Fluke. But Tank War, uh, tank war versus uh, Tank versus Tank right now. Slows just swing into the enemy Reinhardt. 60% already though for him. Super Fluke not quite so lucky, only at 30%. A Fox does have the Discord or we talk about how crucial this is when looking at these Rhyme Battles, but Super Blue can be afflicted with that, take 30% extra damage. Eagle Gaming do have Hip on Memora, but won't be able to change him out to his Inyala should they wish until he goes back and tries to respawn, or if he dies. Early Coalescence, that Mora doing a good job of healing everybody up. There's the Shadow, hits the ground, only finds one though. Ravage and Surge in the back line. There's the charge, finding one. Super Flukes taken out of it. But a Fox using that Transcendence once again. Staggering the support. Ultimus isn't going to be available for this. Graviton Surge, though. Hard is just right clicking in. A Fox and Luddy are going to go down. Uh, will be Elibo losing his mech as well. Failed push for the, uh, for the time being for Angry Titans. And look at Eagle Gaming. The ultimate bank and economy has just been so good this entire map. Can we just point out that Lil Bo basically just got a sound barrier as quick as Hitbox Coalescence? That's insane. <laughs> That's absolutely mental. He was hitting so many of those sound waves onto those chunky targets from Angry Titans. And Lucio's weapon is one of the hardest in the game to master because of its first fire off four rounds. And of course, the slow travel speed of a projectile can be incredibly hard to use it effectively. Oh, what a shatter. His only god. There's the bomb as well. Lopsish, not where you want to be, my son. Uh, he does not manage to find the saber. He did get shield. Basho's shield was down. Instantly disintegrated by the bomb. Perfectly timed by Nico. And they already have another coalescence online. And guess what? Hardest is 80% towards a grab. He always is, Jaws. He always is. And he can maintain that energy because he keeps winning fights. You can see already 65 energy. Has used his personal barrier, but still has to project it to keep Super Fluke safe or to cleanse that Discord on. There it is. There you go. 100% charge. Fear of no man. A lot of hard effects, I'm just saying. Hardest has that <laughs> craft on surge available to him. Shadow does hit the ground. He's going to want to be able to de mech someone from Angry Titans. Ali both Angry Titans to start off with. Super Fluke is going to fall though. Nico's going to find a little bit of comeuppance, but Luddy with a two piece. Hello. Support's coming online. Support will come back. Yes, indeed. That will be Angry Titans jumping themselves onto the point. They finally find the almost team kill, and they do have a couple of bolts to spare. And that was only using the Shadow. Hardest held on to his ult. Maybe a little bit too long there. 
Oh, AFOX certainly didn't. I think that was a quite questionable transcendence by my books, Jaws. I think they could have probably won without that, and now AFOX needs to build up to that again. Oki's going to use a rally while everyone's nice and safe in this little conclave. I'm going to build up some armor, but Hard is going to move forward. You know exactly what he wants to do. But first, it does look like there is going to be an eaten Graviton by Nico. Graviton got eaten. Only God's one's disappeared. Hardest one definitely hasn't, though. Straight on top of the point where it spawns. Lost his shirky and only got him gonna fall down. Hardis just so perfect on desire. I'm gonna force everybody back to spawn. A Fox unfortunately whip shotted to Kingdom Come. And that will be them just almost trying to spawn camp now. Well, the French have set up a fortress on English soil. I don't know how I feel about this right now, George. But Angry Titan's gonna be trying to break it. Lossish moving forward, gonna be swinging a super fluke with what a massive fire strike there for six people. He's got the shadow, he brings it down. <laughs> that felt so nice. If you're a Reinhardt player, that definitely uh, has a bit of tingling to That's got to feel good. As Reinhardt ASMR right there. Lully is going to fall, which means once again, Nico Gaming just holding this forward position. I've got Rally to their names as well as here finding that transcendent soon. Nico even has the bomb. But AT, they can still move out. They still have a shatter of their own. They do have a premium on the charge for Graviton Surge as well. Nico's going to let this with a self destruct. Oh, you can see the momentum coming through from Evil Gaming. Just kill Losis, destroy his shield so Nico's bomb can do work. That's exactly what happened. Losis buys the dust and they find a nasty stagger onto Elivo as well. Eagle Gaming just not letting up. And I talked before about the shield pressure we see on Lolsius. He takes so much damage on that. That's why they always have hip on the Zinyata, so they can lay down those orbs of destruction. They do good damage even without a Discord Orb, just to those all. See you, Lully. Transcendent Shoes, they have to make the play now. A Fox is going to use it. Nice pin, actually, coming through from Lolsius. Does find Leaf over the stairs into the building opposite. Hotel, no vacancies anymore. There will be hip with the Transcendent still available to him. And you can see now Eagle Gaming, they know they've lost one, and that being Brigitte, they have to pay a little bit more more scared with that mech falling as well. They might just take this fight and just don't use any ults, just take it, that's fine. The car really hasn't moved anyway. In fact, I'm surprised it hasn't got back into the garage. A helpful little boop there from Lilbo, booping forward Lolsish to give him a clean swing onto Super Blue. We wanted to quickly reset that because Eagle Gaming, think about how, how far back they spawn right here. They spawn right at the back of the map and Leaf's only got that Shield Bash, the movement ability, should he wish to use it. So it's gonna be a while before he could get back, use that rally and make sure that hip and hardest were in replace they like to be, given extra armor and you see only god here he's going to be a sneaky beaver he's going to be trying to hide in this particular corner doesn't want to get spotted out but he has to be aware of a 3d peek that can come through from the shield users nice grab though does pin the reinhardt and a couple other people on that wall Luddy finds the boot kill somehow doesn't do much damage but hey you get yourself another kill on the scoreboard nice little start for winston's lab and that will be here for nico falling as well a nice cheeky graviton surge very hidden and that will be leave just trying to delay as much time as possible beautiful team wipe there from angry titans using only the single ultimate in fact, I'll take that back. I think Ellie Vogue used the self destruct as well. Yeah, Ellie Vogue used the self destruct and it broke Leaf Shield. And we've got to talk about the value of breaking the Brigade Shield, even though it does take a while because it's got 600 health. When that shield is broken, the shield bash ability is disabled. Oh, an attempt there by Superblue to catch out Lolsish while he was midway through his charge. But now Lolsish has all the advantages in the world. He can be as aggressive as he wants. There's a rally going on as well, coming through from Leaf. The shadow does hit the ground, doesn't find anybody. A sound barrier as well to keep all alive on the car. They need to be able to do something here. Nika's going to receive the shield. It's being extremely aggressive, but Super Blue is going to go down. A Graviton surge around to four members of Eagle Gaming, and they're just going to get eaten alive by Lolsish as he clean sweeps Eagle Gaming. Hard is just trying to save and conserve his energy, but he is taken out of the game, out of the server by Only God. They end up capping the second point, but one minute and 40 seconds remain for them to cap the last. So I'm going to talk win conditions here, Jaws. Eagle Gaming have one minute and 14 seconds of a time back. That means that there is no courtesy minute available for Angry Titans if they move into overtime because Eagle Gaming have more than a minute. Angry Titans need to, this to not go into overtime when they capture if they want this to not be a draw. What a grab. That might be a better bomb, though. Lost is just going to go down. That's the key tank for Angry Titans falling. Has the shadow as well. So quick retreat from Angry Titans is necessary here. Any stag is that Eagle Gaming is just bonus. Bloody is going to go down to Nico and Super Blue holding forward. This is Eagle strategy right now. Now, just hold them in spawn. Angry Titans once again on the clock. One minute exactly remaining right now. They've got three ultimates to their name if we count. This Graviton Surge, Reverny God has just claimed. He does have, of course, the advantage of a Hardest here who's only just used his own, but Hardest does have a lot of energy moving forward. There is the Graviton. Graviton Surge. Oh, Lox has got bumped out of the way. The bomb with what saved. shields. Hardest comes big up with the shields, protects the rest of his team by just using that particle barrier on himself. 
That's there will be Nico's mech mark. going down. Lilpo is going to fall as well as the mess of Superfluke's body is just flung to the high heavens. Early vote moving forward. They've got 30 seconds remaining. Eagle Gaming still have another fight, however. That was successful for Angry Titans, but they did have to invest a fair amount there. And of course, because that was not as clean as they wanted with the combination of the Graviton and the self-destruct, Hardest has moved up towards a Graviton Surge himself. He's got 85%. Down goes the hammer, but it claims no one, Jaws. Claims nobody. Superfluke moving forward. He wants to get his one off, make it a little bit more impactful. Losish gets That's smacked. There's the grab as well, straight on top of everybody, oh, and eliminating the transcendence also. That charge from Super Luke is beautiful. No one receiving that 300 HPS. Overtime through, no one can touch the point, and Eagle Gaming are two maps up. In front of their home crowd, Eagle Gaming showing pure dominance on their 3-3 composition. Hip hitting Orb after Orb and Hardest. He may not be playing Reinhardt, but Jaws, I'm going to go ahead and call him the Shieldmaster. So perfect. Leaf's aggressive Brigitte. Just so insane. You could see Nico got up, rubbing his hands. He's ready. He knows what's good. Surprised he hasn't got his big watch on, I'm not going to lie, because he needs to know what time it is. Or he might not even need to. It's Eagle Gaming time. Well, that big watch, Jaws, it does uh, slow down his hand a little bit, may make his... Uh flicks around with the Diva a little bit slower, and he needs those flicks to be fast because he's catching Gravitons as well in that defense matrix. <laughs> Just weight resistance training, that's what I call it. <laughs> Wearing that uh, five kilogram watch he has. I did uh, I did ask him in the interview, I was like, man, that's a big watch, dude. Took it off, it's like the size of my palm. I'm like, jeez. It's massive, man. It's crazy. It's <laughs> also, plays are pretty big as well. Nico's been just a, a bright spark in this team. You've got to say, he can play not only the Diva extraordinarily well, the bomb placement is just so, so good, clearly taking a leaf out of Foco's book, and he can play Genji, things that uh, we don't normally see every now and then, uh, don't uh, see every day in contenders anymore. We don't really see the Genji a lot, but when he pulls it out, receives so much support from his team, the Nano Boost always land on top of him, and he's always able to carry the game. Yeah, Hip's often able to play on that Anna a bit more now, because Anna's become a little bit more in vogue with that slight buff to Banana Boost, giving a quick 300 HP increase when it goes onto its effective target. So you can use it now to try and save a tank or a high health target, should they be in a spot above it. Almost works like a mini Resurrect. I'm happy Arna's back in the game. I can finally use my gold gun. Feels good. <laughs> but we're going to jump to a quick break, guys. Eagle Gaming 2-0 up. We're going to see if AT can come back after the break. <laughs> 